you know, we had choices. And the choices were simply, do we invest uh, 75% and give it to our employees, 80%, 90%, whatever. And, and it didn't take us long to all agree that we want to give 100% of it. Hi everyone, this is Susan Givens, publisher of Auto Success, and I am sitting here with Steve Middlebrook, CEO and dealer partner of Hayward Allen Motor Company in Athens, Georgia. Welcome, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Awesome. We were just talking about, um, before we went live, NADA and just a, a crazy experience this was um, that we had over, over the, the last year. I know that you guys probably have you know, done a lot in 2020 to change your dealership. What are you doing in 2021 that um, models after what you did in 2020? Well, we're, we're really doing a lot of the same and a lot of the same. Um, we like several other dealers and I'm not going to sit in here and tell you that we have the silver bullet. I don't want you to take, think that we have the silver bullet, but um, I've learned years ago that I'm, I will flatter the next dealer by copying them and taking it to the next level, hopefully. To answer your question, initially, the first thing we did is, is we hooked up, and this was an idea through NADA, one of our board meetings, and uh, we hooked up with the local hospitals, the retirement homes, and, and we hired about 10 or 12 retired people, and we just day in and day out would take and pick up nurses' cars, doctors' cars, bring them in for service, take them back, and we've continued it to this day. We still do that, and so that during the March, April, really downtime, uh, kind of lessened the blow, so to speak. And then we hit May and it was unbelievable. And every month since then has been unbelievable and it still continued to be record month after month. So, well, we've continued along those lines and, and we've done things um, that we've, again, try to take to the next level, like videos. Everybody knows about videos, but what I think people are now learning is how so very important it is to be totally transparent. And so, you know, we require every one of our technicians, if they find one thing wrong with a customer's car that's not on that repair order, they have to take a video or a photo. And uh, that has helped us tr tremendously. And I could go on and on from, from the video aspect of it. But of course, metrics, measure. We measure, measure, measure. Uh, we measure internally as well as through Toyota, through General Motors. Uh, you know, each measurement allows us to see how we're going against ourselves as well as our peers and what areas we're deficient in, as well as what areas that we are doing a good job in. And But we're never doing the best job, I promise you. We can always improve. I love that. Now, you know, I know you're part of the NADA board, but you've had a, you've had a very successful history in the automotive um, industry. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself, how you got into the automotive industry? Uh, wow, that was 47 years ago. Uh, I was a senior in college and... Um, the, our name of our company is Hayward Allen. And for those that don't know, Hayward Allen is an individual's name. And he happened to be captain of his football team back in the 40s. And he got into the business um, when he was in the Navy, buying old Jeeps and refurbishing them and bringing them back and selling them. And so he got a franchise and he hired me. And I was going to work for just a few months until I went to law school. And as they say, the rest is history, because since that time, you know, I'm, I'm like most people that start, you know, fresh and didn't have a father in the car business. I sell sales manager, F and I manager, general manager, uh, dealer. And then I was partner with his son and, and then his, uh, son was in kind of an absentee owner. And he, uh, I, my son, my son and I bought him out a few years ago. So, uh, I'm kind of long in the tooth, but I've got plenty of energy and I want to stay in this business until I probably kill over to you the truth. But, you know, you know, I don't know how to say no. I like to get involved, whether it's in the community, whether it's our state board association. I'm on the Georgia uh, Automobile Dealers Association, have been for probably 20 years. And, and uh, you know, what I give back, I promise you, I get more return. That's great. I can tell that you have a lot of really good energy. And speaking of energy, I know that it takes a lot of energy to, um, to get an award like you guys are getting year over year, 15 out of 16 years, best dealership in Athens, Georgia. So well, actually, so, actually that that's, in, that's incorrect. It's 20 out of 21. Wow. Uh, those were some old numbers and, and please, I'm, I'm, I'm 
humble when I say that. So that's not about me. That's about our people. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so how did you maintain that year over year? Because I know there's probably a lot of dealerships in the surrounding area of Athens, Georgia, right? There are. We just, I promise you, we just have a good crew and uh, they're good people that work everywhere. I don't care if it's the car business, uh, banking business, we could go on and on, but um, we try to instill each and every day um, our culture. We, for example, right now, our management team are, are reading the four disciplines of, um, of management. And uh, we, we discuss that, how we can improve. Uh, it's just constant improvement, just constant improvement. We don't want to sit on our laurels. Um, we can't. We can't afford to. Somebody will pass us by, as you well know. So it sounds like education is is pretty on the top level of your dealership. Training is uh, it, training is every day. Uh, training is every day. Whether it's you know we have an in in house trainer as well as of course the various training that the manufacturer provides you. Um, and then we use outside sources, uh, some names that you may be familiar with from David Kane and, and the, um, the Business Development Center, and I could go on and on. Um, we promise you, we do not know everything. We, we've got to be open to learning and also open to change. We, I guess the motto is, if it's not broken, we break it and try to remake it. So I know that your dealership is the largest in sales volume and the largest employees in your area. Now, how are you able to maintain both of those? We were blessed. We were kind of the anomaly, I guess. During COVID, we actually added 19 employees. And where some dealers were cutting back, um, we, my son and I, uh, discussed this as well as my general manager at the Toyota store. And, and when the PPP came out, you know, we had choices. And the choices were simply, do we invest uh, 75% and give it to our employees, 80%, 90%, whatever, and and it didn't take us long to all agree that we want to give 100% of it. And by doing that, you know, they maintained their income level and, and they didn't go backwards. And uh, we found that it was just a, a tremendous investment uh, for us to, to grow. And surprisingly, we found out that other employees at other dealerships heard about it. And they said, wait a minute, we'd like to be a part of that. So uh, it wasn't intentional, but we had a lot of positive byproducts of that. That's awesome. What Could you give our audience a few nuggets to take back to their dealership to help grow both their sales volume and their employees? You know, maybe just a couple little tips or tricks. Well, it, it I don't know that you would say tricks, but I, I, I know it would be something that would be so obvious, but it is simply to listen, to listen to your employees. Uh, we work on a premise of servant leadership and servant leadership is real simple. I'm at the bottom of the totem pole. I'm not at the top. I'm at the bottom. My general manager is just a hair above me. The sales manager, a hair above him. And we're here to serve our employees. If we try to boss anybody around, it's going to go backwards. So um, we're, we're blessed that we, we get along. We're, we are, Susan, we're a dysfunctional family. Anytime I bring that up, I, I get from you what I get from every new employee, a smile, mm -hmm. because we can relate to that. And being a dysfunctional family, we can either let it eat at us or we can sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk about the situation, improve communication, improve relationships, improve attitudes. So uh, that doesn't sound like that much of a, of, a, uh, of, a, of a tidbit or an idea, but I think that's the core of who we are. That's the core. Of course, the, the other things are, as I, as I mentioned, is, uh, is our measurements. I probably have, I don't exaggerate, I probably have 15 different grids or, or reports or, or metrics that we look at every day. My general manager and I sit down at 7.30 every day, and we just take 15 minutes. What's going on? What can we do? How can we address these things? Communication, whether it's with, within the dealership or with our customers, is so important. And I, here's one thing that I will say customer satisfaction. We're, we're kind of off the charts in that in our area, we have uh, right at 8,000 Google reviews. And for our community, that's our next in line has 1,500. And we have found that if we have a negative review, our policy is real simple, is the manager has an hour to respond to that review. And if he doesn't respond, then I respond. And we respond in a way that's possibly a little unusual, but we found it to be very beneficial in that we call you. We call Susan. Hey, Susan, I understand 
that you're upset because we took too long to repair your car, that we, we did this, we did that. And we leave a message because most of the time you're not going to answer the phone. And so we leave a message. Well, I want you to know, Susan, how important it is we address your concerns. Would you please call me back at such and such number as soon as possible? But we don't stop there. We immediately take that same phone and we text you. Susan, I just left you a message on 825-1212. Please know how important it is that we address your concern. Would you please call me back? Then we send an email and we essentially say the same thing. So we have communicated three different modes of communication within maybe three or four minutes. And our intent is to let that customer know how important it is that we address that problem. Now, who monitors that? How do you know as soon as you get a Google review or how do you know when to address it? Okay, we get, uh, when someone gives a review, we actually, uh, I do not see the positive reviews. I, I look at those on the weekend and we're blessed that I, we get a lot of them, but I'm only concerned with the negative reviews. Uh, it's my opinion, oh, well, to answer your question, we're, we're with a company called Podium. You may have heard of Podium. I'm not sure, but yep. Podium, Podium provides us reviews. And so we own, I only see the negative ones. And I firmly believe that when you take a negative review or a negative customer, they don't become a satisfied customer. They jump completely over that and they become from dissatisfied to a, a raving fan. And so that's, that's our intent is to, we know we're not gonna be perfect. When you talk to in the service sales body shop, you talk to 250, 300 people a day, you're gonna mess up. You're gonna to forget to call somebody. You're gonna miscommunicate. You're gonna damage whatever it may be. So how do we respond to that? That's great. I, I think that that sets you guys apart from a lot of other, other I guess, dealerships in the country um, to be able to address that. And you know, I'll tell you just, as a consumer, if you know I was upset and I got a phone call, an email, a text message, just to have somebody want to listen to why I'm upset um, means the world. Well, and 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 that's what I mean. We're a faith-based organization, but having said that, being a faith-based organization, we try to simplify it by simply say, "How would you treat your mama? How would you treat your mama?" Okay, and I know that. As, if someone's listening out there, they're saying, wait a minute, that's the way we, that's the way we treat all of our customers. I understand that, but, you know, let's be sincere about it. You know, each and every time, how do we, how would you treat your mother? That's, that's what's so important. I know that you see, you've seen tons of trends um, happening over the past year that you see happening in the near future. What are some trends out there that you're really liking that you think you're going to adapt to? Um, we would love to hear that. The, the good thing about being on our NADA board is that each day I get a recap of the day from NADA about various news items. And uh, so the trends, for example, I've got an industry relations uh, board meeting tomorrow, a Zoom meeting tomorrow, and we'll go over some things. You talk about trends, they're positive, they're negative. One of the trends that we're very concerned with is, is uh, with the democratic control um, of the CFPB uh, because of cracking down on F and I, you know, there's the, there's the thought process of some of the people now in control that car dealers are bad for, uh, for customers when it comes to financing. And we have proven that. I mean, it's not just hearsay. We've proven over and over again. So that's the trend that, you know, we're really not, you know, not too, uh, cons not too, uh, fond about. And, uh, I hope we can re reverse that because we're doing everything we can as an organization to address it, to convince, CFPB that we are good for consumers. Again, I go back to the thing I've already mentioned from a trend standpoint, videos have been around for a while, but I think that a lot of dealers are finally saying, wait a minute, videos anywhere in every department, it doesn't matter what the department is, every single department, we can turn uh, what used to be the text, it was, was the latest thing, and now videos. For example, in, with, uh, we can do a video on a, on a car for a customer, but if we can use FaceTime, for example, and have it interactive rather than just one way. So that's one of the things that we're, that we're doing more and more of. Yeah. It's, I like that because then the customer can actually ask questions and right. then you can actually, as a salesperson, form that relationship right. and be able to do it virtually. And one other thing as far as trends, and we all know that um, 
with advent of COVID, uh, there are all kind of programs out there about customers buying from home. Uh, and we have seen a small uptick, but we're still seeing, and the trends that we're seeing is that more and more people, yes, they do all their homework at home. They go on the internet. They, you know, they, they call us or send us emails through our business development center. Uh, but the majority of people still want to come in the dealership. Uh, we'll be glad to deliver a car to someone's home, uh, whether it's when they purchase a car, whether when they service a car, whatever it may be. But uh, I think a lot of people still like that, that interaction. And uh, of course, we are very, very, very strict on uh, the COVID policies. Uh, we still stand firm on that. I think most dealers have not relaxed uh, their, their policy and, and how they, they handle their employees and the customers. And we have stayed to that also. It's, it's very important that we keep our customers safe. Now, as far as the service um, end of your dealership, are you guys doing... Um, a lot of the same trends that you're doing as far as selling the cars um, virtually. I know you're doing video. Correct. We're, we're doing video and we're, we're blessed. And as a matter of fact, we are in the next couple of months going to be expanding our service department. We have a relatively new dealership, but uh, we have grown so much that we're adding 14 more service bays and another car wash and so forth. So we, we've got to continue to, to stay ahead of the curve. And right now we're behind the curve, I guess, but we're trying to stay ahead of it. But yes, we're still doing a, a, a lot of that. Um, our, um, our service advisors are, are very you know, customer friendly. And uh, you know, as far as the videos, uh, they will send videos to customers. We're checking customers out you know, from, their, from their home or office. A lot of things I know other dealers are doing, but some customers prefer this while others prefer to come in the dealership and do it what I would call conventionally. But so we want to provide a, uh, if you will, a smorgasbord of different opportunities for the customers. And you, Susan, you tell us how you would like to handle this service experience. You tell us how you would like to handle this sales experience. We would love, prefer to do it the way you want to do it. You know, everything's transparent these days. That's great. And just to have the options is just a beautiful um, way to do it. So sure. Thank you, Steve, for sitting with me today. Um, we really, really appreciate the time that you've given us and, and everything you're doing with NADA for the automotive industry. Um, we really appreciate that. Thank you. Well, we're all in this together and went in for the long haul too. But thank you so much also, Susan. I appreciate it. Absolutely. 